on the road again with the Natural Exposures family, but this time is to the incredibly warm and friendly islands of Indonesia. It's a land of remarkable culture, sandy beaches, glorious sunsets, and mesmerizing wildlife. Our adventure begins in the bustling city of Bali. We'll check into the magnificent five-star intercontinental resort, and it's here that we'll spend a couple of days recovering from jet lag and exploring the local culture as well as the sacred monkey forest. Once rested, we'll head for the rural rice paddies and temples in Java. Dan is there every step of the way helping you capture the land, its people, and the ethereal feel of the sacred temples built over 1,200 years ago. With a greater appreciation for the people and the place they call home, we pack our bags for the jungles of Borneo. On the left side, it's not national park. So there's a people settlement on this side. And also there are a few palm oil companies. So the forest here is very less. It's less than 500 meters from the river because it's privately owned by the villages. Uh, some of them follow the regulation to keep the forest 500 meters, but most of them don't follow the regulation. So according to survey in 2003 by Rongtan Foundation, there were about 5,000 Rongtan left in this national park, including the about 300 rehabilitated one and the rest is wild one. But when we had a big fire accident in 2015, the International Union Conservation for Nature announced that the conservation of the Bornean Rongtan is shift from endangered become critically endangered. So it means now it's less than 5,000. But for the last uh, four years, we have seen quite a lot of new babies born and it's a good indicator for us. Hopefully the population will increase again. The trees along the river are alive with bands of proboscis monkeys feeding on fruits and nuts. Morning dawns and we set off for the jungle, our destination being platforms used for the reintroduction of domesticated orangutans. Orangutans that were taken from the jungle as babies, stolen from their dead mothers that were killed by poachers. A park ranger makes his way to the platform and sounds the morning call. It takes some time, but soon several orangutans begin to arrive. To get them used to being in the wild again, natural food is left on the platforms. Eventually, the edibles are reduced, so they begin to adapt to their proper home. It's a long process, but one that's working well to increase numbers and give these animals the freedom that they deserve.
It's been three glorious days of hanging with what they call the old men of the forest, and we head back for the tropical waters surrounding Komodo Island, where the sun turns to dusk and we take in the magical spectacle of thousands of flying foxes leaving their roosts. The next morning, it's all about Komodos. Some are large, some are small, but all of them look like creatures from the era of the dinosaur. As the day warms up, there will be time for relaxation and snorkeling for those more adventurous. But unfortunately, as we know, all good things come to an end, and to finish things off, we spend our last night on the beautiful beaches of a resort on the island of Flores. Sharing the good times with new friends and old as we prepare for our trip back to unfortunate reality. But no matter how far we stray, nothing will diminish the lifelong memories, the adventures, the education, and the lasting friendships that make travel so incredibly inspiring. <laughs>